fucking love this weather! Cryostasis, also known as Cryostasis, Sleep of Reason, is a psychological horror game developed for PC by Ukrainian developers, Action Forms. It's a game that's always hung around in the back of my head for a little over a decade. It was released back in 2009, and I remember watching a Let's Play of it over and over when I was younger, and back when YouTube just had a maximum video length of uh, 11 minutes. People like to say things were better back then. I don't. I would be tucked up in bed around about midnight. The rain would be lightly and rhythmically tapping against my bedroom window. The brisk October air had no chance to get to me in my bundle of warmth and safety. My phone, barely five inches away from my face, would be playing the aforementioned playthrough of cryostasis. Halloween was right around the corner. I was excited. And most of all, I was happy. So now, as an adult, uh, I replay old and janky games from my past to relive the last times I experienced true contentment and genuine joy. I bet you're jealous. Digression aside, Cryostasis has always stuck with me, like most slapjank games do. It's a game with a lot of atmosphere, a batshit story, and a mixed bag of gameplay. I like to call it the Ukrainian Special Blend. This is just... Horilka. For a game from 2009, it still looks great. Even a decade later, and especially when it comes to the environments, lighting and particle effects, it was one of the first games to use physics real-time war physics, and in general feels like a tech demo kind of game. Lots of crumbling ice, reflections, and the feeling they were really proud of this engine and what it could do. Character models look a little dated, but everything else holds up pretty well, except for the performance. Even a decade ago, the game was notorious for being quite poorly optimized and crashing a whole bunch. Nowadays, the game still stutters and hangs when there's a lot going on, the first half uh, faring much better than the second half, where I found the game crashed constantly, unless I put the settings down to medium, which was annoying, but manageable. The game begins with you making your way towards an icebreaker ship called the North Wind. You're a scientist, and have been assigned there to do some weatherman stuff. Things don't go well, as is the standard with the genre. You're stranded. The ship has frozen over and the crew are nowhere to be seen. Oh look, there's one. Something has gone wrong and you have to crawl through the frozen carcass of the ship to try and find out what happened. Fighting against the cold and warped monsters to try and stay alive. Luckily for you, you're no ordinary weatherman. Sit down, warm up while it burns. Health in this game isn't replenished through med packs or regenerating health, but through heat, mainly by finding heat sources and activating them, warming yourself against them and filling up your heat gauge and stamina gauge. The less strong the heat, the less you get healed and the less you recover. The stronger and more powerful the heat source, the more health and stamina you get and the more punishment you can take. Feeling cold? Go stand in the corner. It's 90 degrees. Your health slowly dwindles when you're in a room colder than your health bar. It's a really cool mechanic that really drives home how dangerous the cold is and adds to the already rigid and oppressive atmosphere this game has.
Oh, right. I should probably talk about this. Part of your unexplained list of powers, including the ability to briefly see into the past, is that you have this ability at certain points in the game to jump back in time into the bodies of various unlucky souls blocking your path, called a mental echo. Once here, you can stop them from dying by following the right paths, fighting off enough monsters, and just in general, ensuring their survival. Once completed, the path before you unlocks, and you can progress through the game now with a little bit extra health and more stamina. What do you do between these moments of progress? You fight for your fucking life! Combat in cryostasis straddles a fine line between survival horror immersion and just regular jank. You may have some weird powers, but you're not an action hero. You have to use everything you come across to survive, melee being your weakest and floatiest options. But thankfully, this is a Soviet icebreaker, meaning you got plenty of guns. Gunplay itself is serviceable. You're mostly fighting in cramped and narrow boat corridors, so using old Soviet weaponry here is like using a sledgehammer to drive in a nail. Certainly doable, but clunky. Awkward combat and horror games go hand in hand to really drive across the feeling of helplessness and to further scare you. Cryostasis is no exception to this. It is, however, a little bit more amusing with the interesting selection of weapons you can get. You have the usual suspects of Soviet weaponry, trusty bolt actions included, as well as some more pragmatic weapons, such as a flare gun, which is very situational, and a heated super soaker. Also very situational. What actually is our situation, I hear you ask? Well, I'm glad you asked. They are to the bone, almost glowing. Our situation is grim. What you're fighting against can only be described as Silent Hill meets Scrap Heap Challenge, with some of the designs of these enemies being the real highlight of the game. Their art design leaning heavily into symbolism, and it can be really intimidating at times. Especially this guy. This guy. And this guy. Turns out, a bunch of these things were once the crew. The more you progress through the game, you start to form a vague understanding of what happened here. The north wind collided with an iceberg, partly due to a mixture of stubbornness from the captain and, mainly, a lack of faith from both his officers and the crew had in him before and after the incident. I'm so Look, you're a big boy now. You can't play around forever. And I can't help you this time. Now go, please. Go. Quit trying. Everyone has had it with you. No one wants you here. So there. He's been asking for it anyway. Just can't take it anymore. Their situation gets worse and worse as the cold begins to seep physically into the ship, and then metaphorically into the hearts of the men. You're here to exercise them with heat. Heating places on the ship as you go along, the rooms unfreezing in real time in this awesome transition. The ship itself is tense to explore, as previously stated, almost being claustrophobic at times, entering a room with some actual headroom being a welcome reprieve. The game itself is very linear, with not much reason to explore other than to collect scraps of ammo. The levels themselves just being you trying to navigate your way through the ship via light navigational puzzle solving and heavy lead problem solving.
I also just want to give a warning to anyone who has epilepsy that this game has a level or two with some of the most violent and flickering lights I've ever seen in a game. I won't show it, but trust me, like all things Soviet in this game, it is practically weaponized. Well, if you're keen, try this for now. The main story of the crew is told in parallel with pages of a folktale you find scattered around the ship, called The Flaming Heart of Danko. A short prose by Maxim Gorky, an early Soviet-era writer and leading figure of the ideology of God-building. Basically, the idea of reinterpreting existing religious ritual and symbolism into a socialist context. Basically, the dude was big into uh, old guys with big bushy beards. The big G-man and the funny red man. The story itself is basically about a leader called Danko trying to get his people through an oppressive forest. They slowly begin to lose faith and blame him for their misfortunes. All the while, Danko keeps trying to save them and guide them to safety. It's both an allegory and a... and a... Oh, wait, hold on. The more of the crew you save and the more time jumping you do, the more twisted and numerous the enemies become, the ship itself becoming distorted and filled with both malevolent cold sculptures and otherworldly sights. Eventually this all culminates in an ending that's equal parts baffling as it is a spectacle. Spoiler warning for all of you who's interested in actually playing and finding out what the actual fuck is going on in this game. Here's a big timestamp. Yeah, so basically the Greek god of time himself, Kronos, erupts from the ship's nuclear core and then challenges you to a duel of sorts to ultimately decide the fate of the ship and its crew. I guess it's implied throughout the game that Kronos has been helping you out via this bright red light that originates from where the nuclear reactor used to be. Your unexplained powers and the like could also be of Kronos' doing. Why is he here? Why is he helping you? Is he helping you? Fuck if I know, man. What do you think? In the end, despite its really janky shortcomings, if you're interested in cryostasis or are just a fan of horror games in general, I'd say cryostasis is worth checking out. I have a soft spot for Eastern European games and their wonderful atmospheres, so I had a good time with it. The game itself is abandonware, meaning it's not being sold digitally anywhere since Action Forms has been dormant since 2011, all of their original members already having left to form a new company. It's basically defunct, and the IP is in publisher purgatory, with old Steam and GOG versions having been pulled years ago. You can buy used physical copies on eBay and such, but I have a better suggestion. I'll put in the description a link to myabandonware.com where you can download the game for free. Have a happy Halloween, everyone. Stay cozy.